six, five, four, three. Hello, I'm Charles Wedemeyer, the Lighty Professor of Extension Education at the University of Wisconsin. Wedemeyer devoted over four decades of his life to the field of education. Starting out as a high school English teacher and then building on his teaching and curriculum building experience, he took on leadership positions that influenced thousands of people and influenced institutions throughout the world. At Racine Center in Wisconsin, he turned the two-year school into a central part of the community. He assisted the University of Wisconsin in creating one of its early successful satellite campuses. During World War II, he learned about correspondence education and designed, developed, and edited course books for U.S. Armed Forces personnel. During the next decade, he led one of the largest correspondence programs in the world at the University of Wisconsin and expanded its student base to include students from around the world. He developed the experimental program, AIM, which was an innovative approach in the field of distance education. He shared his ideas with colleagues around the globe, with individuals who would become OUUK planners, and he was a consultant at the OUUK before its doors opened. He was hired by UNISA to conduct an independent study of their single-mode distance education program. Tens of thousands of students took courses at the University of Wisconsin under his directorship. Wedemeyer was an early adopter of radio in education, television in education, and in researching and using satellites for education. He predicted the use of computers for educational purposes in the future, and predicted that non-traditional learners around the world would one day have access to educational opportunities. His ideas about open education and the future of education were cultivated in the 1960s, and almost 60 years later, the world has embraced some of these ideas and is still striving to bring the Education for All vision to fruition. Over the past 40 years, the OUUK model has been adopted by open universities all over the world. Wedemeyer's contributions played an important role in the educational opportunities that have been opened up for millions of international students. Wedemeyer, in fact, was recognized as one of, and by some, as the most influential and knowledgeable people in the world in the field of correspondence education. Otto Peters called him the expert and Oxford University recognized Wedemeyer as an important figure and expert, inviting him to be the first Kellogg Fellow at their institution. His peers from around the world recognized him and elected him as president of the ICCE for 1969 to 1972. The University of South Africa called upon Wedemeyer to evaluate and make recommendations for the future of their university. The Carnegie Institute donated a generous amount of money for the AIM program. The University of Wisconsin created the William H. Lighty Professorship for Wedemeyer so that he could concentrate on research in the field of correspondence education. The OUUK hired him as a consultant during the early days at their new Milton Keynes campus in 1969. In December 1969, Wedemeyer received the Gail Childs Award at the Galaxy Conference on Adult Education in Washington, D.C. The AIM program also received an award. In 1975, Wedemeyer was also nominated for the Joseph C. Wilson Award. In 1975, Wedemeyer was awarded an honorary doctorate by the OUUK, making him the third recipient of this honor and putting him in the company of former recipients, Poilo Fuere, and Lady Plowden. In the presentation ceremony, the OUUK's professor, Walter James, spoke about Wedemeyer's achievements and credited Wedemeyer with assembling 
a theoretical base for the operation of adult and alternative teaching systems, and noted Wedemeyer's contributions to this OUUK system and to the field in general. What's to come in open independent study for the adult learner is still unsure. What is sure is that Chuck Wedemeyer, who more than any other person secured liftoff for the vehicle, will be developing its guidance and control systems and sending it further into the unknown, beyond the limit of its present orbit. Those whom such education has reached out to and touched owe more than they know and far more than they can repay to him. The Open University, an inheritor of his inspiration, a beneficiary of his advice, and a learner from his wisdom, has the privilege of offering a token on their behalf. Evidence suggests that the most influential individuals and organizations in open and distance education of the time considered him to be just that. He was sought after as a consultant and speaker, his scholarship and research was widely cited, and his experimental program, AIM, was used as model for the OUUK, which became a model for scores of open universities that followed it. He was recognized as a leader who encouraged others to build quality programs, conduct research, to publish results, and to share those results in a collegial fashion for the greater good. The greater good to Wedemeyer was education for all, especially those learners who were the non-traditional learners who had to enter, as he put it, through the back door. Members of the Faculty of Education, I should like to thank both of you for your lively participation in conversations. And I hope that you both have uh, the expectation of your your careers in the Open University. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you, Chuck. Second memorable experience is um, working with Wedemeyer in his capacity as um, president of what was then in ICC, International Council of Correspondence Education. Uh, and incidentally, it was during his tenure um, that the, uh, the work got underway towards the change uh, in title and everything that went with that. Uh, to International Council for Distance Education. He was responsible for the establishment of the newsletter, which eventually turned into an ICDE journal, uh, the first membership list, uh, yeah. and we were getting very primitive computer-based um, data uh, resources then. So generally, building and holding the World Conference in Warrington, Virginia, uh, the last time until it came here to Penn State in 1990 that the conference had been held in the United States. And sort of being an international person myself, and Wedemeyer was, I mean, I'm sure he took me on uh, partly because he was a great enthusiast for internationalism, again, before his time. I mean, today, you know, we jump on jet planes and we, 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 uh, we email across the globe, as a matter of fact, but then in the early 70s it wasn't like that. Um, hardly re relevant directly, perhaps, but it just comes to mind how Wedemeyer used to put his hand in his own pocket and take out whatever, 20, 25 dollars to pay the ICC membership for a woman from Poland, because behind the Iron Curtain they weren't able to get out money and it was difficult for them even to be involved in these kind of associations. So internationalism, uh, was um, was uh, very important uh, for him. And this is where the international, I guess, touches with the theory because a lot of the ideas that eventually we developed, he brought in through his connections with the other two big names in our field, Otto Peters in Germany and Buri Holmberg in Sweden and then later in Germany. Um, so through uh, his correspondence with Peters and uh, Holmberg, 
I mean, the, the words distance education came to us from the German uh, Fern Studium, which he, he brought in through his connections with, uh, with Peters. I first met Holmberg, in fact, in, um, in uh, Wedemeyer's office. First heard the term distance education, which I then helped through, what, through my presentation at that world conference in 1972. I mean, I, I had put in a lot of thinking about the pedagogical concept of distance, uh, but the, the terminology uh, I first heard from Holmberg, uh, who was visiting Wedemeyer. He advocated the need for the development of a theory to explain what happened when people were learning in one place and teaching in another, and there had been no, there was nothing prior to his statement in '68 or whenever it was in the Encyclopedia of Education, a short statement about the the meaning of independent study, uh, independent both in space and time, as well as with a degree of self-directedness of the learner, which was the seed from which I took off and ended up with a transactional distance and learner autonomy. Until then, uh, <clears throat> there, there was n in none of the educational literature was there any accommodation at all of the idea that people could learn in one place and teach in another. Education was defined as what went on in a classroom. It was a group process in a classroom. So, so establish, I mean, the fact now that it is so obvious to everybody uh, that education, teaching and learning is not only what goes on in classrooms, uh, originates with Wedemeyer. So now we have the Wisconsin Conference for the 25th year, we have the American Journal of Distance Education coming up to its 25th year, uh, we have courses all over the country and over the world. Uh, that did not exist in 1970, 71, 72. So, you know, so Oh, then we can go. We can reflect again on articulating instructional media project and uh, the the dissemination of ideas into Europe and elsewhere into the open universities, and then the coming back of many of those ideas into American higher education. And so the practice, and especially I think the the uh, the conceptualization and the advocacy of scholarship, uh, this is this is Wedemar's achievement. If you take, let's just take two steps, designing a course and conducting the interaction with students about that course, just dividing teaching into the, just those two steps alone. If you then have one person alone who specializes as a person designing a course, who doesn't have to go to work thinking about how do I interact, and another person who has the personality characteristics, the enthusiasm for interacting with students but doesn't have to go to work thinking, how do I design a course? Put those two together and you probably already have a superior product to what can be done by one person alone. If you take that same concept, break it apart further and further and further, and put together a team, and the British have boasted quite fairly about how they have developed the team approach to teaching at the Open University. But Wedemeyer and the Articulated Instructional Media Project conceived and first tested out the idea that you can use different technologies and different people when well organized together to make a service that is better than and incidentally less expensive in unit costs, in average costs, than traditional teaching. Now, there's a place for traditional teaching, and traditional teachers don't want to be uh, threatened by the idea that a more systematic approach can be better and can be cheaper. But indeed, we know, we know now, because of the Open University example, uh, that indeed this can be the case. But it all originates with the Articulated Instructional Media Project. There's nothing before that. That's, you know, that's what Wedemeyer did. You know, would we have open universities around the world today? Would we have in our American state universities the influence of looking at the systems approach as practice in those universities? Would any of this have happened if we hadn't had the Articulated Instructional Media Project? Well, maybe somebody would have dreamed it up, but Wedemeyer did it.
Now that I remember, I, I wrote, I, I was terrified. He used to drive me to Milwaukee in the winter in a little MG. You know what an MG sports car is like? Yeah. You know? I mean, it's the size of a decent desk. You know? And, you know, and you're down, you know, only two passengers, and you're right down near the ground, and, and the ground is covered in ice and snow, and he wore some kind of heavy wool coat, and I had a sheepskin coat, uh, and I used to just hold on tight until say a prayer when we got there. <laughs>